In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to create forms within Word 2013. Forms that are fillable, um, you can fill them out, your users can fill them out, your colleagues or other co-workers can fill out forms, you can create templates specifically designed based on these forms to collect data, to collect information for your organization or for your research or for whichever purpose, okay? A very powerful way uh, collecting data and making it more user friendly for individuals to enter information from simple forms to complex forms I'll show you how to um, create a form and design a form uh, within Word 2013 all right so here's our document a sample document that I've opened already just a research paper right that we've been working with notice up in the menus um, the insert design page layout references mailings review um, and view we don't really see a, an option of creating a form and probably within your Word 2013 uh, display, uh, you would not see any of these options. So none of these menus contains forms. And we have pretty much worked with uh, almost all of these, but we haven't really seen the option of forms in any of these menus. To get the new tab the, for the forms, uh, we need to go to our uh, file, options, and under customize ribbon, is where you will see on the right side an option called the developer tab and in most cases this will be unchecked so you'd have to go to file options and customize ribbon and then check this box okay so as soon as you check the developer box and click OK the developer tab is now active okay within your Word 2013 environment so you will need this tab to create forms so this is the first step so you need to make sure that you have this developer tab so once I click on this developer tab, I see a bunch of options, right? So I see my first group, I'm starting from the left, is the code group where I can record a macro. I can play with Visual Basic programming language. My, then I have my add-ins, okay? I have my controls. And this is exactly where we need to be. This is what we need to use to create forms, okay? So we create forms using the controls group. And some additional uh, groups that we have is mapping, protection and then templates okay and then we'll, we'll work with all of these various groups and I'll show you in, in the next couple of tutorials also but first uh, in this particular tutorial I'm interested in creating a form in Microsoft Word so let's say uh, this document that you have and you are about to create a let's come up with a conference okay so conference on global management that's what we're interested in and uh, within this document we are going to create a form so that the user whoever we send this document to can simply fill out the form and then send it back to us. So let's say we want to create a form. I don't know, this may not be the right document, but you get the point, right? So we're just using this as a sample document. So I'm going to use the heading here called Global Management Conference. Okay. And that's our heading for our form and we're going to say please fill out the following form now notice the way I, I teach is, is we do everything from scratch right so I don't have a form built in that I'm just going to show you I'm actually going to do it for you so you get to see how we design a form okay so uh, here's my text please fill out the following form and my first is uh, fill out your name okay colon I'm going to add a couple of tabs so that move forward. All right, so this is where I would like to insert a, a field now, right? So I'm going to create a form. So I want the user to uh, to fill out their name in a in a particular box, which I can confine the user to to various uh, uh, things to do only specific things. So once I have my cursor blinking, uh, the insertion point where I want this field to be, I go up to my developer tab, right? And then my content group and here are all my uh, controls right so first is the rich text content control and then the next one is the plain text content control the difference between these two is that with the rich text I can use some additional formatting features such as bold italic and so forth okay the plain text I'm a little bit limited to uh, some of the formatting options then I can have a picture content control, so I can have the user insert a picture. Building blocks gallery. 
my date picker content control I can have the user select a date my drop down content control list combo box content control checkbox content control and my uh, repeating section content control okay, which basically inserts a, a control uh, that contains other controls and repeats the contents of those controls and then I have my legacy controls tools also uh, which means that earlier versions of Word, Word 2010 or 2007, I can use some of the ActiveX controls as well. I can insert a command button, assign a macro to it. And again, I'll show you as we move along in the next uh, upcoming tutorials how to, how to use some of these uh, ActiveX controls also and run some uh, basic visual, basic programming um, as well. But for now, uh, we're interested in the name, okay, field. And I'm going to insert just a... Um, plain text content control as as soon as I click on the content control word enters a custom field it's always a good idea to use this you know in be in the design mode you know even though I did not uh, use the design mode to, to begin with but I think it's a for you guys it's, it's a good idea to use the design mode so it, it's good to see the properties it's good to see uh, how your form is building up okay so make sure you're in design mode and then you insert this field okay so once I have this field, uh, notice it says click here and enter text, and that's default text that Word enters. If I click away from the box, it shows me that this is where the, the user is going to be entering the name. If I right click on this content control, I can go to properties, or I can use properties here, same thing, okay? All right, here are my content control properties. I can title, give it a title uh, to this con control. So I can say name. I can create some tags if I want to. It's up to me. I can show it as a bounding box or start to end tag. And the tags are these tags, right? So I can uh, display these tags if I want to. Or I can just show the box, the rectangular box that you see. Or I can say none. So I'm going to say I'm going to show a box and then the color, okay? If I want to, I can use the color option. I can also use the style to format text. Uh, remember styles? So I can create a new style or I can pick any of them, one of these styles, that uh, existing styles that I have. It depends on how your requirement. Remove content control when contents are edited. So once I edit controls, I can remove the content control. Um, here are good features, locking features. So if I choose, if I select a content control cannot be deleted, that means the user, whoever I send this document to, will not be able to delete the content control. And if I want to restrict some editing, I can do that also. Allow multiple carriage returns, uh, which means that the user can enter, you know, carriage returns to enter additional text. So again, few good properties to work with. So once I've given a name, notice Word uh, Word 2013 puts a name uh, title next to my content control. Okay. All right. So I have this, and then I'm going to uh, go to my next line. I'm going to say. All right, name and then uh, location. I want to be able to see where you are. And in this case, I'm going to enter a drop down list control because I would like the user to just pick uh, the location, uh, specific locations. I don't want the user to enter uh, locations by their own. So I'm going to use this drop down list content control. And notice uh, the word says choose an item, but I need to define the item, right? Um, otherwise, it's blank right now. So right click, go to properties, brings up the content control properties dialog box, give it a name, select location, same thing color and on my bottom here, here's where I can add, right? So drop down list properties area is where I can add and I can add a choice and display name. So for example, if my management conference uh, is going to be held in Chicago, for example, for instance, but the users whom I'm sending this document to, they reside in three cities, okay? Yeah, they reside in New York, in Austin, and San Francisco, okay? So I want the user to pick any one of these cities wherever they are, okay? They cannot they don't have a choice. So I'm going to restrict them to first New York and then I'm going to add again. I'm going to say Austin. 
and I'm going to add my third city, San Fran. Just go, okay? All right, so once I've added all these three options for my content control drop-down uh, selection, I click OK. And Word automatically now has uh, these lists. I don't see them right now because I'm in design mode, okay? As soon as I go away from design mode, I'm going to show you this. If I click away from design mode, click anywhere within my content. I can simply pick all my locations. So I can choose an item, either New York, Austin, or San Francisco and you can build a list according to your own requirements. So I'm gonna go back to my design mode here again. Okay. Click on the next line, so I have my name uh, that I want uh, uh, from the user, I want the location of the user, and I just restricted the user to pick from three, three locations. All right, then I'm gonna say, put some dates, so arrival date. Arrival date. Here I'm gonna use, uh, let's see, where's my date picker here? Here it is. Okay, so I'm, I'm just gonna click date picker and Word says click here and enter a date. So let's right click, check out some properties here of dates. Okay, so I'm gonna go right to the bottom here. I can display date in various formats, right? It just depends on how you wish the user to see the dates. Month, day, year, or you can have day, month, year, depending on the format or your requirement and the calendar type. Store XML contents in the following format when mapped. XML content is for, you know, if you're linking it to the web and you're uh, doing some programming. So this is out of this course. I'm going to show it in the next course. All right, so once you've selected the type of date, click OK. And here's my arrival date. And also want a departure. Okay. Do the same thing. Date picker again. I will be, oops, I will be attending, the spelling right here, the following events. And I'm going to list out some events also. Use the space here. Found, you can see. All right, here I'm going to give three choices, four choices, or two choices to, to the user, whoever's going to fill out this form. And I'm going to create some checkboxes, right, for the user just to pick. So first, uh, the, my first event will be sightseeing. So I'm going to be able to create a box here. So after sightseeing, I go up to my control group and I select checkbox content control. Okay, the word is going to place this. Same thing. I can go check out some properties of this box. And I can say sightseeing as my title. And I can change the symbol. So once the user clicks, it places a cross uh, within this box. I can always create a symbol of my own. I don't want a cross. I want a, some other um, symbol. I can always pick any one of these. Okay. Same thing with unchecked. So unchecked is blank by default. And similarly, you can have it the default value. Okay. So I click OK. Tab once again. My next event is city tour. Okay. Same thing. Go up to my control group, create another checkbox, and then my third is all right. Uh, what I'm going to do? I'm going to sightseeing. I'll be attending the following event. I'm going to sightsee, and I'm going to say, let's say, magic show. Wow, oh, I just made that up. Okay. Same thing. I insert another checkbox. Okay. So if I go away from design mode now. Uh, notice my form is looking much better. Obviously, I can do some formatting. Okay, uh, let's say I want to be able to uh, create some some table or you know styles and whatever. And you can do that. Okay, so it's it, it's up to you. It, it's completely up to you. You can choose some of the styles. Go to your home tab. Bring up your style. Okay, and you can say this is the style that I want, or you can create a new style. All right, so once I have my form, I'm going to close the styles group. I can save it as, of course, send it, save it as a template, this document, and then send it to the user. And notice if I go back to my developer tab and my design mode, right click properties on any one of these controls, 
I mentioned earlier that you can lock it, right? The content controls cannot be deleted. And you can do the same thing with each one of these as you while you create them or you can do it later. Um, I didn't do it in the first instance because we can edit it and delete it, right? But I'm just gonna uh, use this option for a couple of my controls here on top. Okay? And then go with some examples. All right, so once you get this form, the user is gonna see this form and the user is gonna say, all right, my name is John Sellers, okay? And my location is New York. My arrival date, ah, very nice. I'm gonna be arriving on Thursday and I'm gonna be departing on Monday. And I will attend sightseeing and, and I'll also like to see the magic show. And he's done, okay? So he's gonna save this document or the template and send, send it back to you or you can publish it on the web, lots of things you can do. And you'll have this form. So very, very easy way to create form in Word 2013, collect data uh, from the users. Uh, these forms again can be used for an example such as I provided, which is attending a global management conference information or you can have your company data collected or your HR forms. You can build new hire orientation forms. So these are just a couple of examples to use these forms in Word 2013, okay? So let's take a quiz.